last class we were dealing with the Floquet theory uh, by which one tries to assess the stability of periodic orbits. So, if you have a periodic orbit like this, the way to, to understand the stability is start from some initial condition that means, this is x at t naught and then as you go around this orbit, you end up here at x at capital T, then the whole period is T minus T naught. The way to understand the stability is to express x at capital T as some function phi times x at T naught and this phi will be dependent on the initial time, the initial value and the total time. So, t x naught t. <coughs> this particular thing is nothing but a matrix because here you have a vector that times a matrix gives the final vector. This matrix as we told is the monodromy matrix. and the eigen values sorry of the monodromy matrix are the floke multipliers So, ultimately the job is to identify this matrix and obtain its eigenvalues. <coughs> now, as we have said that if you are evolving something from here to this point, say I have uh, x a and here I have x b, then x b when expressed in terms of x a is x a pre multiplied by the state transition matrix. Okay. So, <coughs> that is how we understand in standard control theory. So, x b is the phi the state transition matrix times the state x a. <coughs> so, that is the, the concept of the uh, state transition matrix then. Then we will write x b is equal to phi a b times x a. Okay. Now, if we write this then it is also true that if you take a perturbation from here and that ends up as a different perturbation say here, here then this perturbation the delta x b can also be expressed as phi a b delta x a. So, the way states are related the perturbations are also related. Okay. <coughs> so, we will essentially follow this up in order to <coughs> develop the, the concept of the monodromy matrix. Now, uh, in the last class we had started saying that here if you have a state x a, then suppose it goes to state x b and then it continues to state x c hmm. or in other words it goes from x a to x c in between a state is x b. Then you can write uh, as we have just done x b is equal to phi a b x a. You can also write x c is equal to phi b c x b. So, these are the individual uh, state transition matrices. Then you can write x c is equal to 
uh, phi a c x a from from here to here and then your phi a c will be nothing but phi b c times phi so simple affair then <coughs> you have the flight from x a to x b to x c then if you want to obtain the state transition matrix from a to c it is just a multiplication of the state transition matrix from a to b and b to c <coughs> so far so good this is the general theory that you learned in standard control theory texts now these state transition matrix what are these uh, if in case this the the system is linear time invariant lti then your phi uh, going from t starting from t naught will be starting from t naught flight over a time of t will be or uh, t naught to t will be exponential matrix a t minus t naught Hmm. So, here this A is a matrix. So, this is a matrix exponential. <coughs> uh, the way matrix exponentials are treated, I do not have the time to, to, to discuss it in details here, but this can be found in any standard control theory textbook. Essentially, the way we handle the exponential, any exponential, uh, we handle the matrix exponential in the same way as a, a uh, expansion binomial expansion. So, this can if you know the matrix A that means if you know the elements of the matrix A and if you know the starting time the ending time then you can evaluate this just as a number. And in MATLAB this matrix exponential evaluation is given by the x p m function. Hmm. So, all you have to give is expm within bracket and uh, you have to give whatever is in the exponent. So, this is the, the simple thing and if you know this then you can easily write delta x of t that means the perturbation at time t is e to the power a t minus t naught uh, delta x at t naught. Okay. this is nice and this tells you that if you have a orbit something like this then if you can start from here go up to here and if you can calculate the state transition matrix from here to here and then if you can come back then all you need to do is to multiply this same state transition matrix and the state transition matrix to obtain the total state transition matrix over the whole uh, cycle or you can uh, uh, break it up into further segments say five segments. In that case, you have to go from here to here, obtain the state transition matrix, go from here to here, obtain the state transition matrix and then multiply all them. No, it does not work. It does not work if you have a, a, a non-smoothness in this orbit. Let us come to why. Uh, <coughs> suppose you have an orbit going something like this. Say here is a switching manifold it starts it starts from here and it hits like this and then it goes like this and this is different the vector field is different and then it goes like this so this is the starting point and here you have the vector field is different in the sense that if you draw these two tangents they will be different. If you draw these two tangents, they will be different. Hmm? In that sense, the vector field just before crossing and the vector field just after crossing are different and that is exactly what happens in most uh, non-smooth dynamical systems that we have already seen. The question is now, if you say that from here to here, my state transition matrix is A1, from here to here, the state transition matrix is A2 from here to here the state transition matrix is A 3, then you cannot say 
that that means you will write uh, delta x of say here it was hitting at tau 1 here is tau 2 starting at 0 ending at t then x tau 1 is a 1 delta x 0 hmm? delta x tau 2 is a 2 delta x tau 1 and delta x t is equal to a 3 of x tau 2. If this is how the a 1, a 2 and a 3 are defined, then you cannot say that the product a 1, a 2, a 3 this is actually not equal to hmm? this is important because most people uh, make a mistake at this point that these are not the same why the reason is something like this <coughs> when you are starting from here when you are writing this when you are writing this delta x not you are essentially saying that i i am considering a perturbation and then when you are reaching here you are saying that this is how my perturbation is flying Hmm. And then at this point, the original trajectory is the, the uh, switching manifold and the perturbation is something like this. But then after it starts, you see that all the points on the perturbation do not reach the switching manifold at the same time, they reach at different times and therefore, after the perturbation when you start, you start from a different ellipse and then you go on coming to this and you get, get an ellipse. Here also you have some kind of a different ellipse to start with and then that goes on. And when it reaches here, whatever is the size or the shape of the ellipse that is given by the total monodromy matrix. Mm -hmm. That means the initial ball times the initial ball means you consider a circle or a sphere and then multiply, pre-multiply that by the monodromy matrix gives you the final ellipse or ellipsoid and that tells you whether or not in any particular direction it elongates or shrinks, contracts. If it contracts in all the direction, then it is stable. If it does not contract in all the direction, then it is unstable, unstable and so on and so forth. But it is not difficult to see that since all the points, all the, the perturbed trajectories do not reach the switching manifolds at the same time, therefore, this will not be valid this will not give the monodromy matrix. That's where valid, that was valid for this case because there was no, nothing like a switching. So, if you consider a perturbation that evolving here and then that continuing to evolve here, essentially it is the same continuous evolution and that is exactly why it worked, but in this case it will not work. Uh, in that case, how to handle it? Uh, when we try to handle it in that situation, essentially, mm, let us start in a neighborhood of the switching manifold. Say, here is a switching manifold and here is a a part of the orbit that reaches the switching manifold. Hmm. It starts from a point say x naught and reaches at, I uh, will write it here, x t, t p is the time when it reaches, hmm. 0 is the time when it starts and t p is the time when it reaches and then it goes up. Okay. There is a, a part of trajectory that starts from this point and it also goes and reaches and this from this point it goes off. So, the blue one is the original trajectory and the green one is the part of trajectory. 
and the perturbation is given by this vector hmm, and this vector is delta x naught. So, the perturb trajectory is x naught bar and this is delta x naught. When this fellow has uh, reached the switching manifold, this fellow has not re reached and supposing at that time when it is here, this fellow is here say. Hmm. So, you can draw the perturbation like this at this point. Okay. So, what is this, this particular value? It is x bar which is at the time T p. Right and then after some time it reaches the switching manifold and then it goes off. Okay. When it reaches the switching manifold, this fellow has already crossed and has come to some distance say here. So, at that point you can draw the perturbation. Now, this perturbation here is delta x uh, we will call it p minus and this perturbation we will call delta x p plus. Essentially, we are interested in how the perturbation evolves across the switching manifold and you can see that this one, this perturbation is wholly in this side of the, the switching manifold and this perturbation is wholly in that side of the switching manifold. So, we are trying to find out how this one maps to this one or in other words, we are trying to find a, find a expression so that we can write delta x p plus is equal to something times something times delta x p minus. That is how it, we are trying to express. So, what we are trying to express? We are, we are saying delta x p plus is something times delta x p minus. Once we do that, then this is the, the state transition matrix across the switching surface this term. We will do that. Fine. Now, uh, a few things we need to write. What is this? This is uh, this particular point is in green x bar, this is at T p bar. Hmm? T, p, a, T p bar is a point at which time at which it reached the switching manifold. So, this one is x at T p bar, x at T p. So, this is the setting in which we are trying to do things. So, let us carry on. First thing, what is x, uh, x not bar that means part of trajectory x not bar is x not plus delta x not right. Clear. Now, we need to find out this this perturbation and this perturbation. So, what is this perturbation? Delta x p minus is this minus this x bar t, t p minus x t p right and this one delta x p plus is equal to this one x bar t p bar t p bar is the time at which this trajectory reaches the switching manifold minus uh, x t p bar. Okay. So, these are the th uh, three equations that we can easily write basically relating these two. So, since we are interested in this equation, we are interested in the right hand side how it will ultimately come up. Now, you see <coughs> x t p bar this one x t p bar is this one. Huh? So, x t p plus it has evolved through this. Huh? So, if your uh, vector field in the left hand side is f p minus and the right hand side is f p plus, then it has evolved through the right hand side vector field 
uh, so this is x t p plus in the first order approximation you will have f p plus times the time that is taken that is delta t. Hmm. So, this plus the vector field times the time that is taken. Similarly, this point uh, here x bar t p bar is this x bar t p plus f p minus and the flight time. Okay. Uh, x bar t p hmm? x bar t p is is here. So, we can substitute. Hmm? So, we can write this is equal to x t p uh, plus delta x p minus plus f p minus delta t. So, we have expressed these two good next step uh, keep this thing in mind so that we can uh, we will need to refer back to it. Now, we start from delta x p plus hmm. this is what we are trying to find out we are trying to find out this. Huh? This we have already seen that this is x bar t p bar minus x t p bar and the right the two right hand sides that also we know. So, we will express it as uh, x bar t p bar is here and x t p bar is here. So, we will substitute these two and thus we get x t p plus delta x p minus plus f p minus delta t minus x t p minus f p plus delta t these two cancel off and so we are left with delta x p minus uh, plus f p minus delta t minus f p plus delta t essentially this minus this times delta t. Okay. So, far so good. <coughs> now, you notice that uh, if we drop a orthogonal here, then you notice that uh, delta x p minus times the normal to the switching surface is equal to this is f p minus delta t uh, normal normal times the f p minus delta t. So, if you take its component here and its component here they are just opposite to each other and the components are obtained by by taking the normal normal to the switching surface. Huh? So, the normal to the switching surface is n say n is here. So, n times this vector is equal to negative of n times this vector. Right. So, we can logically write uh, n transpose because n will be a vector it has to be transposed in order to multiply with it. This times f 
p minus delta t is equal to minus n t n transpose delta x uh, p minus okay delta x p minus uh, this can also be if you are not convinced this can also be obtained from the condition that the this evolu uh, this evolution satisfies the condition for the switching manifold at this point and this evolution satisfies the condition of the switching manifold at this point and switching manifold is beta x equal to 0. So, we can write so we can write beta of x t p equal to 0 as the condition when this is satisfied and beta x bar t p bar equal to 0 as the condition when this is satisfied. Now, you can take this and uh, expand this. So, you can write I will write 0 in the left hand side 0 equal to beta x bar t p bar we will expand it beta x t p plus beta x bar t p bar is just from here huh? we already have it plus delta x p minus plus f p minus delta t hmm. and this can be this can be taken out and this can be written as beta x t p plus n transpose delta x p minus plus f p minus delta t. Okay. Now, this term is 0 because of this. So, you get this which is the same as writing this. So, at the end of the day what have you? You have delta t expressed as <coughs> minus n transpose delta x p minus divided by n transpose f p minus. Okay. So, this is the expression for the time taken additional time taken for by the perturbation to reach the switching manifold. Now, once we have it, things fall in place because uh, we started with this, we wanted to express this and this was ultimately expressed as here. Okay. So, we will start from here, we will write, uh, just keep this in mind, uh, okay, I will I'll write here, delta x p plus is equal to delta x p minus plus uh, mm, okay. f p plus minus f p minus times c times minus delta t. Can you see? If you take delta t out, it is f p minus minus f p plus we are putting the negative sign out so that this get, get can, cancelled off. So, this times n t delta x p mi minus divided by n t f p minus. Okay. Now, what are we driving at? Ultimately, we are driving at this and you can see that we have it really. We are trying to find this which is delta x p plus divided by delta x p minus. So, if I divide now both sides by delta x p minus we have it. So, we will write uh, your um, this particular thing which is called this the solidation matrix. Uh, we are actually trying to express it as delta x p plus is equal to solidation matrix S times delta x 
p minus. So, what is the definition of the solidation matrix? It is the the state transition matrix across the switching manifold that is called the solidation matrix. Solidation the word means jump. So, it is just nothing but a jump matrix. In some literature, you will find the word jump matrix. So, you can easily see from here, then the S will be S will be uh, this will turn this will be divided by x p minus. So, it is i plus x p minus has been divided by. So, this goes off you will say it is f p plus minus f p minus bracket times n transpose divided by n transpose f p minus. So, this is the solidation matrix, this is the expression for the solidation matrix. Now, uh, in, in deriving this, so this is important, keep this in mind. In deriving this, <coughs> we had assumed that this surface is static. We did not uh, assume any movement of the surface, but in general it can move. For example, the switching manifold, the switching surface, uh, there is no reason to assume that it will be always absolutely static, it is possible for it to move. In case of the impact oscillator, the impacting surface can move. In case of the, uh, the switching circuits, the condition for switching can be a moving surface. So, that is all actually not only possible uh, reality. In that case, the <coughs> expression will turn out to be in general. will turn out to be i plus uh, the numerator remains the same f p plus minus f p minus uh, n transpose. Here it will be same thing n transpose f p minus, but additionally there will be one term that relates the rate of change of the uh, switching surface. So, will be the partial derivative of the switching surface with respect to time calculated at t is equal to t p. So, this is the total final expression for the solidation matrix. Once we have it, things are things will become rather simple because uh, let us come back to the condition that we took. Uh, uh, uh. Leave it, let me draw it again. Here is your switching surface, and here is your starting point. You go up to this point, come up to this point, and say you go up to this point. Hmm. So, the, this is the evolution. In that case, <coughs> this is the starting point is 0, this is the ending point. <coughs> so, suppose your uh, evolution from here to here is given by a 1, from here to here is given by a 2 and from here to here is given by a 3. So, the state transition matrix from here to here up to the time t tau 1, up to the time tau 2, 0 to tau 1 is a 1, tau 1 to tau 2 is a 2 and tau 2 to capital T is a 3. In that case, as I told you, you cannot say that the total monodromy matrix is a 1 times a 2 times a 3. Here at this point, at this point, there will be a solidation matrix say let us call it uh, S, S 1. Then there would be a another solidation matrix at this point S 2. Hmm. Then the monodromy matrix M will be we will start from the from, from from the this one in the right hand side a 1 times s 1 times a 2 times s 2 times a 3 okay notice the order in which we are writing it is starting from the right proceeding to the left as you go around the the whole orbit and 
it is a very simple to do the same thing for an orbit something like this. Uh, if it is a complicated orbit, higher periodicity with a number of switchings, it is nothing but you start from a point and you find out this, this state transition matrix from here to here and then at this point you again obtain the, the solidation matrix, again the next flight, again the solidation matrix, again the next flight and then you simply multiply them. That is how you obtain the monotony matrix and the eigenvalues of the monotony matrix will be the, uh, the flow k multipliers, that is all. And if the flow k multipliers are inside the unit circle, you have uh, a stable periodic orbit. If it they are outside the unit circle, you have a unstable periodic orbit. Okay. Uh, so, this is how we actually find out the stability of uh, periodic orbits. And in case of the non smooth dynamical system where there is some kind of a switching, this is the complication ultimately that can easily be solved, and ultimately you can obtain the monetary matrix. <coughs> now, as I told you, we were considering border collision bifurcations in which the ultimate thing that we need to evaluate is how do the eigenvalues change as the fixed point goes across the unit circle. There, an orbit like this will be just a fixed point of the corresponding Poincare map and the the eigenvalues of the fixed point will be same as the eigenvalues of this. Hmm? So, when such a orbit crosses the, the switching boundary, that means, if uh, you imagine that there, there was an orbit something like this, and as you change the parameter, it crosses and it becomes something like this, then there has been a change. There was only one excursion to this side earlier. Now, there are two excursions here. So, in between there has been a border collision event, a grazing event which is nothing but a border collision event. And naturally, in order to understand uh, that border collision event, you will have to find out the eigenvalues of the fixed point. The fixed point in the discrete map so, the discrete map is obtained something like this, you have got a uh, Poincare section and you look at the position here and here you look at the position here and you are interested in the flow k multipliers, you are interested in the eigenvalues of that fixed point, which is nothing but what we just obtained. So, in one case you will have to obtain the eigenvalues of this orbit, its flow k multipliers and here in this orbit and that that these two, two Jacobian matrices will need to be substituted in the theory that we already presented and there the theory will predict what will be the outcome of this, this bifurcation. This is how we apply the theory to a particular concrete situation of a non smooth dynamical system. Is that clear? Okay, fine. <coughs> uh, So, we have uh, we have learnt how to handle non smooth dynamical systems and uh, okay, then let us now, now go to another topic because we, we have more or less in details covered the issue of this. Let us now, now, now treat the problem of how to actually do experiments in nonlinear dynamics. Experiment means where you are trying to construct something, you are trying to observe its trajectory in the state space, you are trying to observe how it looks on the Poincare section, you are trying to observe how it looks when you draw the bifurcation diagram, that means some way of experimentally obtaining the bifurcation diagram. In many cases, we have already treated that, in many cases you will need to, to reconstruct the dynamics by uh, state space reconstruction technique but that, that, that apart, how to actually do the experiments. Now, let us consider this uh, one by one. First, let us assume some kind of a 
generic experiment running inside this box. What does it mean? It means that supposing inside you have got a Chua circuit, it, there is some kind of a oscillation going on in the voltage and the currents. If it is some kind of a uh, electrochemical oscillation, so there is a uh, container in which the constituent components, constituent reagents are changing in their concentration as a dynamical system. If you have a mechanical dynamical system, you have got some physical mechanical component moving and ultimately you have got this and you get some kind of a sense of that. <coughs> what I mean by sense of that means, if it is an electrical system, you have some way of measuring the voltages and the currents and the currents are also very often measured as voltages by passing it through a standard register so that you get a voltage proportional to a current. If you have some kind of mechanical system represented by say the position, the momentum, the pressure and stuff like that, all these need to be ultimately converted to some kind of a voltage signal. So, you need transducers. If you have a electrochemical experiment going on, that also needs to be converted to some kind of a electrical signal in order to actually observe it. Now, let us first illustrate it with reference to a electrical uh, experiment, some kind of electronic circuit in which you are observing these. <coughs> so, what are the results of the observation? Results of the observation is some voltage at some points, some voltage at another point and one of these voltages may be a current proportional to a uh, voltage. And then we can put that on to the CRO, right? And in the CRO, you will find that there are uh, a few ports where you can put. There is the X port and the Y port. So, if you put it in the X port and measure it against time, you will see some kind of a oscillation like this. So, here is your time, here is your X. There is a knob that you can turn in order to plot it in the X, Y mode. If you do that, then you get and, and you have to put the other variable also in the y mode, y, y uh, channel, then you get what you what is actually the, the orbit in the state space, not exactly that. Suppose this is a higher dimensional system, but you are observing only two, then it is projection of that in the direction of this x, y. Hmm. So, you might imagine that it is actually three dimensional system with some kind of a oscillation going on, but when you take your uh, say x coordinate and the y coordinate, then you are essentially looking from here as if your i is here and you are seeing the projection of it in the x y plane. That is what will be observed here. You will not be able to actually observe the three dimensional thing because for that, that requires a different visualization technique. It is possible to do a data acquisition and plot this on a computer in 3D, that is possible though. <coughs> so, you have a, uh, a plot of the, uh, the, the, the phase plane. If you see it something like this, you know that it is a periodic orbit. If you see something like this, you know it is period 2 orbit. If you see something like this, you know it is period 3 orbit and so on and so forth. But Supposing the system is, okay, suppose you want to, to observe it on the Poincare section, what do you do? As you know, the Poincare section can be obtained in two possible ways. In If it is a autonomous system, you will have to place the Poincare section physically. Hmm? That means, if it is an autonomous system and you have some kind of orbit like this and you have to uh, uh, choose a particular value at which you place the Poincare section say here. What does it mean? This value corresponds to some, 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 some particular value of a coordinate say z. So, a particular coordinate satisfying a specific value is equivalent to placing the Poincare section. So, what will you do? You will sense these and uh, 
and these will have to be compared that means the z coordinate value z coordinate uh, signal has to be compared with a a given dc voltage corresponding to this this level you get the point the point is that here you have the x coordinate here with the y coordinate here is also the z coordinate and you are placing the poincare section such that whenever z is say 1 then i observe it what does it mean i will have to take the voltage corresponding to the z coordinate say this is the voltage corresponding to the z coordinate i will have to compare with with a signal 1 and i have to put a comparator hmm. so whenever this comparator uh, changes sign you know that the, the it has been crossed okay but you are not trying to observe it in both both the directions you are trying to observe it when it crosses from one side uh, which means at this point you will have a, a, a signal something like this out of which you either choose the positive edge or the negative edge but not both okay so you either choose the positive edge or the negative edge but not both so whenever this is happening you need to observe the x and the y coordinates so you are actually not trying to observe the z coordinate ultimately you are trying to observe the x and the y coordinate when a specific condition on the z coordinate is satisfied so what you do essentially you will have to suppose you are trying to observe it at the positive edge then you need a uh, you need okay uh, ultimately from here you need something like this at this point you want to observe at this point you want to observe at this point you want to observe so you need a very sharp impulse at these points you need very sharp impulses at this point okay meaning that i want it to be observed at that instant how do you obtain sharp impulses from this it is rather simple all you need to do is to put a differentiator if you put a differentiator at this point it will give a spike at this point it will give a negative spike at this point it will give a positive spike at this point it will give a negative spike and all that put a diode eliminate the negative spikes you get only the positive spikes at the point where you want to observe it right so you have a sequence of spikes you have a sequence of impulses at the points where you want to observe it now uh, in a normal CRO you will find that at the back of the CRO there is something called a Z modulation port where if you if you put this signal then it will make the CRO observe the X and Y coordinates only at those instants when it is positive okay so the simple way of way of doing it is that in the CRO here is the screen and here is the X and the Y put X and the Y but also at the back put this signal this signal at the this Z mod port in some CROs you will find that it observes when it is 0 some CROs observe when it is positive huh? so depending on the specific CRO that you are using you might need to put an inverter hmm? that means you will you will need to to make this value 0 when you want to observe it else it is uh, a positive value uh, that depends on the model of the uh, the cathode ray oscilloscope that you are taking so here is the x port and here is the y port you take the y x port and y port put these things so what you do ultimately what you get on the screen you see dots where are the dots that is when x and y are observed at these instants which means you have done the sampling you have you are observing it on the point color section so whatever appears on the CRO screen is the phase portrait in the discrete time okay so this is actually how the observations are done in mechanical or other domains essentially the same procedure has to be followed only you need to get x y z as a voltage signal fine 
Okay. <coughs> now come to the point how to obtain a bifurcation diagram on a CRO screen. Mm. For obtaining the bifurcation diagram, say something like this. What is your x axis? Is a parameter. And what is your x axis? Is a variable. So, this variable could be x, y, or z. And these are, as I told you, have to be obtained as a voltage signal. But parameter then also has to be obtained as a voltage signal, then only you can put it on the CRO. Now, some parameters are naturally a signal parameter. For example, if there is a reference signal that you are, that you are giving and that itself is being used as a parameter, you can use that. Or a circuit in which you are applying an input voltage which is variable, that is a, a parameter. So, that can simply be taken as a, a, a x axis coordinate. Why? Because then that is already available as a voltage signal. In the cases where you do not have a parameter directly available as a voltage signal, you have to cook up some way in which it is converted into an equivalent or proportional voltage signal. Suppose a resistance is varying, then how to, how to uh, do that? You will have to use a two limb rheostat, one limb is your load, the other limb varies at the same time and you apply a voltage, uh, you uh, allow a current to flow and depending on the, on the resistance, you get sense the voltage. So, there are various ways of actually doing it, but the essential message is that ultimately you have to obtain the parameter also as a signal. Now, put the parameter, the voltage corresponding to the parameter in the x coordinate of the CRO. So, here is the screen, here is the x and the y, x, x will now be the parameter and put the y coordinate as one of the variables, for example, x, y or z, you take one of these and put in the y coordinate. Normally, what you will see? For a specific value of the parameter, you will get just a point, if the orbit is period 1, because parameter has a specific value and if it is a period 1, then the sampled value also has a specific value, sampled. That means, here you have already put the, the this particular signal in the z modulation port. That means, you are not observing it continuously, you are observing it, it in the z mod. Okay. Then, as you change the parameter, that means, you change the input voltage, change whatever is the parameter, then this coordinate will change. As a result, this point will move. And as uh, well, suppose this, this uh, orbit goes through, goes through a period doubling, then what will you see? As the parameter reaches a particular value, you will see there are two sampled values for the state y, hmm? again two. So, you will get something like this, again if it, is, if it goes into period 4, you will get something like this. If it is chaotic orbit, you will get a smudge. So, the whole bifurcation diagram actually appears on the CRO screen, but not at the same time. As you move, it actually sweeps through. This bifurcation diagram actually sweeps through, right? And when it comes here, this is no longer there, it has vanished. So, how to capture the whole bifurcation diagram? Uh, in the olden days, we used to take a camera, switch everything off, all the lights off, take the camera and make a very long exposure. That means, you, it is it's kept open so long as it's, it, it is giving, giving, being given a sweep. So, this parameter is given a sweep and it ultimately captures the whole bifurcation diagram on the uh, film. Develop it and you have it. Nowadays, you have got the digital storage oscilloscopes, where you can uh, store. As you give the sweep, you can store. So, ultimately you see the whole bifurcation diagram on the computer screen. Okay. This is another nice way of doing it, but one word of caution. The digital storage oscilloscopes uh, 
measure the actual signal and the noise with equal intensity. So, if the system is noisy, then uh, you will see a lot of smudge around this if it is done with a digital oscilloscope. While in analog oscilloscope, the actual signal is brighter than the uh, noise signal. So, you act, you see the, the bifurcation diagram better with the analog oscilloscope, but nobody nowadays does it because of the, the because it is somewhat cumbersome to, to switch lights off and put a camera and do this slowly. So the other way of doing it is that if you have a parameter, one way of giving a sweep is to, to generate a signal that is stepped like this. That means, this parameter instead of actually slowly varying it, you give a stepped input. How do you do that? You can generate a stepped signal and use that as a parameter. And if you do so, then what happens is that exactly the same thing that you do in a simulation. What you do? You change the parameter and then you observe it. Again, you change the parameter in another step, you observe it. So, that is how we do. If you give this kind of stepped signal as the parameter, it automatically uh, observe it and say after some time it falls and then it goes like this again. Again falls. What will you see on the screen? It will be swept. The sweep will go on and you will see the image static on the screen. Image of the bifurcation diagram static on the screen. That is another nice way of doing it. Okay, I will call it a day today and we will continue with the next class.